what happened with Nigel Farage? Because I know you were a big supporter of him. You were sh sharing reform. You'd put all your supporters mm -hmm. onto him. What happened? Because then he went online and says he had no connection with you or some shit like that. Well, no, it's worse than that. I wouldn't mind if he had no connection. I, I, don't, I don't ask Nigel Farage to support me at all. What I want him to do is stop lying about me. What does stop, he do? stop kicking us when we're down. Stop, stop tiring us as far right. Nigel Farage is, is, has been tired as far right. He's been tired as a racist. So he knows what it's like when you're falsely accused of saying. And then he goes and kicks the boot and does the same to us. But not just to us, to anyone in his party that speaks up for us. They're removed from seats. They're told that they can't stand in election seats if they speak publicly about Tommy Robinson. Where, where's your issue on freedom of speech? He has a policy where the IRA, ex-members of the IRA can join reform, yeah? Ex-Islamic terrorists can join reform. If you've been associated with the English Defence League, you can't. Really, Nigel? What, what, what was wrong with what the English Defence League said, said then? Because the English Defence League were tired and attacked the entire time I led it. The entire time I led it, the, the Metropolitan Police Force have a national extremism unit that brands organisations like the BNP, like um, different groups. The entire time I led the English Defence League, it was branded by the police experts as a centrist organisation. It was never a far-right organisation. It had a Jewish division, a lesbian and gay division, a Sikh division, a Hindu division. Does it sound very far-right? It's not far right and it wasn't far right because the media continually told the public it's like they just lie and lie and lie and then it becomes a matter of fact. And then I don't, ex I, do, I just don't, ex wouldn't have expected Nigel after the attacks he's been under to do exactly the same, Ta to take, to toe the establishment line. And I've, I, I've, in the, in the upcoming, in the last election, I don't, didn't want to be accused of dividing the vote. Yeah. People saw reform as the best option there was. So I told people, yeah, that, that they, are, they still are the best option there is. So, but every populist party in Europe, so Gert Wilders has got to power. He stood, on, he stood and said he would ban the Quran. He stood and said he would have mass deportations. He didn't toe a politically correct line. The Austrian leader that just got elected and won the election two weeks ago said mass deportations are coming. Remigration. You're going back. Yeah. You're not welcome here anymore. Many of you. Okay, I'm not saying everyone, I'm not saying everyone, but criminals, people who are on the terror watch list, we have 40,000 on the terror watch list, they, well, they've got to go, get rid of them, they've got dual nationality, they've got, they're from Pakistan, we can't even get rid of the men that have groomed and raped, the Rochdale, the Rochdale rapists who were told they would be deported, none of them have been deported, they was, they're bumping into the victims in Asda, it's a joke, Ev, Salvini got into it, won the Italian, won the Italian election, Le Pen, all, none of them have been, fear, all of them have been fearless, Nigel, I think, doesn't shift the Overton window at all. He waits for the Overton window to shift by people like us or activists like us, and then he joins the bandwagon. And it pisses me off, if I'm honest, because I sit and think, you kick us when they're down. I, I, I currently am about to return to the UK. I face four years in prison. I made a film that has 52 million views that exposes corruption in the judiciary, the lying of the media. And how many British journalists and MPs that ha have spoke about it? None. The first one yesterday, Alex Phillips. First journalist to contact me about that film was yesterday. It's on 52 million views and I faced four years in prison for it. Were you actually thinking you were getting somewhere this year because every demo got bigger, it got stronger. You had millions on the live, you had hundreds of thousands on the streets and then straight after the last demo, all the UK riots started. Yeah. And obviously you're getting the blame for all that. You're at the forefront of instigating it all. Well, Wait. this is a, it winds me up again. So, Nigel... Again, I'm just, I'm just, I've got to have it because I'm annoyed, yeah? Nigel shared a post that said it was a Syrian illegal immigrant. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't share any post that said that the attacker was Muslim or Syrian or a refugee. I don't share anything until I know it's right. In fact, in my, in my group for my social media, I have fact checkers. So every, every news story I see before I post, I put into a social media group and it's their job to check and find the facts before it's put onto my social media. So Nigel shared some bullshit, so he was accused of instigating the riots. Then when he's getting interviewed about the bullshit that he shared, he said, well, well you want to act like I'm some sort of Tommy Robinson? No, Nigel, you're not some sort of Tommy Robinson, because I check my shit, yeah? I'm a, I'm a journalist and a thorough investigative journalist who checks my content before I put it out, whereas Nigel did, so I got blamed for the riots when, I, when all I called for was calm the whole time. Every video I made, do you know why? I understand the anger. I understand why those people are angry. When I was 25 years old, when I started the English Defence League, we put balaclavas on. We were angry. Yeah? So, but we had no voice. We had no outlet. No one was talking for us. No one would listen to us. We were totally neglected, totally forgot. White working class are the biggest ac academic underachievers yeah? in the country, 
It's not blacks. It's not my minorities. It's the white working class, the forgotten community of this country who have been beaten down, trodden down, alienated, absolutely obliterated as a community. Like we don't belong, like, like we don't have a belonging. We don't have a belief. We don't have a culture. We don't have a history. We don't have an identity. They've attacked us at every level. So I understand the anger that's in the country. And when people began writing, I was the first person, I made a video saying, where are the men? Because these are all young kids that are writing. Where are the men? To take, take the balaclavas off. Get the kids in place. And, that, and I'm saying that because I, know, I knew what the government would do. What the government have done is use that reaction to totally hide the reality of why the British public are angry. Now, why are the British public angry? What they don't want to show you. So in Tamworth, Google the Tamworth riots, you'll just see that it was far right riots because that's what Keir Starmer told everyone. It's the far right. It's racism. In Tamworth, a local a Muslim housed for, paid for and housed in the immigration hotel went out and raped a woman. I'm pretty sure it's going to piss off people in that town. Yeah, One of the people that we've paid for as taxpayers to come into our country that we didn't want. Let's face it, because the majority of the British public have, have voted and every poll for the last 20 years has said we want an end to mass immigration and they've accelerated it year on year. Yeah. So people that we didn't want, if we had a controlled border, if you look at Hartlepool, Google Hartlepool, far right racist riots. No, a, a, a Muslim terrorist who was housed in the hotel that you invited in, he went out of that hotel and stabbed a 70 year old pensioner who went to buy a newspaper in the morning to death for Gaza. Yeah? If, and then if we look at all these towns and cities, Yarmouth, yes, one of the Muslims left the hotel and raped women. Do you know 12 hotels? They've, they've left the hotels and raped women. 12. Bournemouth, where there were protests. In Bournemouth, a migrant come in. And, and these, these stories are in every town and city. A migrant come in. He come into the UK from Afghanistan. He said he was 15. So there was questions over him being 15. They put him into school. Yeah, There were questions in the school that he wasn't 15. He was sexually harassing girls in the school. I believe he threatened someone with a knife in the school. Of course, he didn't get expelled because he was a, a refugee. He then goes on five years later to stab a 21-year-old Royal Marine to death in, in Bournemouth Town Centre. At that point, even though they knew there were warnings at the start, at that point, they do an investigation into, the, into this Afghan refugee. They find out that he wasn't 15 when he come in. He was 19 or 20. Then they find out he shot two people dead in Serbia with a machine gun on the way to Great Britain. So a man who shot two people dead with a machine gun was put into a school in Bournemouth, even though they knew he wasn't 15, even with all the warnings. So the failures from the Home Office, the failures from the government have left a father, because I listened to the interview of the father, my heart broke for the man, yeah? His only son, an aspiring young English man, who, who'd done well at school, who joined the Royal Marines to be a successful citizen, was murdered by someone that our government let in. And that's just one example, and you can replicate that. For example, in the documentary that I've got coming out next week, and the reason I've stayed abroad is because I believe, we'll see this week, I believe I'll be imprisoned when I get back to the UK. And I wanted to make a video and a documentary to show the world, I'll show you why the British public are angry. It's not because of far-right ideology. It's got nothing to do with far-right ideology. It's got to do with government failure and after time and time again. And their failures have now taken the safety of our doors. They've taken the safety of our mothers and our women. Our women are no longer safe in every town and city. And I challenge anyone to do this. Go put in refugee rape leads. You'll see a woman a jogger got raped. Go and put in refugee. And do you know the other crazy thing? Go and put in York. Pick any city you want and put in refugee rape and you'll read a case. Like if there was one, we've got a problem. But every city in our country, refugees are raping women. And then putting murders, they're doing the same. Refugee rape Leicester, you'll see two refugees raped a bloke. Yeah, Look at the men that they're bringing into the military bases. Have a look at the uh, Wooten Bassett, no, 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 the Cambridgeshire case. They raped two, two Libyans who are based at the military base, went out and raped a bloke who was riding his bike in the park. In every town and city, this is the reason the British public are angry. You've took our safety. Now, if we had controlled borders, none of these women... And none of these people had to be murdered. None of the women had to be raped. None of the parents had to be fearful. We'd need to control the borders and you're not controlling the borders. And even after all the anger that was vented across our entire country in the riots, yeah, this summer, they still haven't spoke about one of these agenda, one of these problems. They still haven't addressed any of them. They've not said, okay, Keir Starmer had an opportunity to come out and be a statesman and say, we understand, we've just been elected. We understand why you're scared. We understand why you're angry. We're going to put it to bed. We're going to get rid of the people that are a danger. We're not going to let in criminals anymore. But instead, 
He wants to give them all amnesty and he, the, the borders open even more. So people are angry and people are upset. It, as you can see, it angers me. And in my research, this documentary, we interviewed a girl. She's at Oxford University. One of the migrants in the hotel. Again, these are migrants that we're housing. We're housing, we're feeding, we're clothing. We're putting them up. He went and raped her. So he's destroyed her life. We interview her and her dad. And what, what's your answer to that, Keir Starmer? She, she's a racist, is she? Is her dad far right? Or is he a, or, or, or is he a betrayed British citizen? Because you've betrayed him. Government after government have betrayed our people. And it frustrates me. So I wanted to put together a documentary, which I have done. Um, it will go out on the 26th of October, whether I'm there or not.